We've got a great video for you today. Scientology was banned in Australia in 1965, and then eventually was brought back where they could deliver Scientology. But we have somebody who was there, Roger Braswaba again, right, Janice? Yes, we do have Roger, and he was actually subpoenaed. So we'll get into asking him some questions about it. Great. Here's the video. Welcome everybody to our channel, Scientology Peeling the Onion. My name is Mark Fisher. I'm here with my co-host, Janice Gillum Grady. Good day, Janice. Good day, everybody. Good day, Mark. Yeah, um, I, I understand yeah. you. Go ahead. No, it's another good day with Roger also on here. <laughs> yeah, Roger's going to be out of here in just a minute. But in the meantime, you've got a special guest, right? It's sitting with you. I do. Look at her. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a doggy sitting her her mommy is like 91 years old and i've known the, known her for like 30 since since we left the sea org i've known her right. so while well, she's been in hospital and rehab i've been taking care of this little sweet thing and my boys are doing great with her and this little one tries to get in on their fights and has a good time <laughs> can you can you hold her up again so that people can see her face and what's her name yeah. Uh, Misty, Mist, Misty, Misty Dawn. Misty. Her name is Misty Dawn, and I and I told I told Barbara. I said, Barbara, that's a stripper name. Oh. And, <laughs> <laughs> so we always laugh about that. Well, welcome, Misty Dawn, and she's there with your boys, Rocky and Moose. And yep. uh, we, we've got by popular demand, Roger Baswava. Uh, we did an interview with him last week, and it was very well received. Uh, he got in Scientology uh, in the in the 1950s. He was a, a star in Australia as a, uh, a lifeguard's uh, off, offshore swimmer, right, Janice? Yeah, he was a gold medalist yeah. as a swimmer, and, yes. And then he got involved in Scientology basically in order to, you know, thought it would further help his training and, and development. And then the rest is history. He was in for several years and we told that story on the last video, but this time we're gonna, he's gonna answer some questions, I think, uh, that he had. And then we're gonna talk about uh, the ban of Scientology in Australia. Okay, let's get going. All right, so without further ado, let me add in, here is Roger Baswaba. How you doing, Roger? I'm doing great for an old fellow. <laughs> Roger, you always remind me of home when I hear your accent. Yeah, well, that's why we say good day, mate. We don't right. say good day, it's good day. Good day, that's right. <laughs> I, I actually teach Americans here a little bit about our Aussie thing. I have a particular Aussie thing, and that is the idea that life's supposed to be enjoyed, mate. <laughs> yes, it is. And, um, and getting them used to that idea, it's hard work. By the way, on the Australian gold medal thing. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, wow, there it is. I don't know, you probably that's can't wonderful. read it. But that that's the gold medal that uh, made me an Australian champion. This silly bloody thing is silver. It was a year after. It doesn't like Manhattan polluted air. Right. It <laughs> makes silver go black. I understand. <laughs> But the goal stands up to it. So that's the trick. See, being a celebrity in Australia, as I was because of the gold medal, every bugger tried to get hold of me for whatever reason, including the Melbourne Inquiry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, they, and, they didn't want you to skip town. Well, I didn't. Yeah, you see, because rather like the American situation, each of the states in Australia is sovereign. We do have a Commonwealth of Australia, but composed of the states and, and one territory, which is the Northern Territory. Right. So, <clears throat> if I wanted to get out of appearing on the inquiry, all I have to do is step across the border and I'm out of reach. Okay. So that's why I got subpoenaed. And two bloody days later, a waste of my time. Um, <laughs> But it's a rather long, sad story, which actually leads into um, one of the questions asked on 
by the people who saw the last video I did yeah. concerning Philip One. Yes. Right. Now, Philip One actually at one stage got himself on staff, but probably as a uh, undercover operation, because Philip Worm was a dead set criminal, fat, ugly bastard, as we would say in Australia. He actually um, was doing a similar thing to me to make money. My gig was I was selling, adver legitimately selling advertising on bowling club scorecards. You see the local tradesman and local butcher and candlestick maker, right. and they all like to put their little ads on the bowling. Bowling, lawn bowling in Australia is the largest sport. 5,000 clubs when I was out there. God wow. alone knows how many people. Uh, it's a big sport. It's also um, an uh, um, Empire Games sport, like an Olympic sport, but only for the Empire, British Empire. So um, Philip Wernsgid was getting hold of the um, uh, trade unions and using essentially um, blackmail or um, um, another legal term, I forgot what it is now, um, to extort, extortion is, is the legal term, extort money from um, people who he thought should support the trade union, like large employers with a lot of um, union staff. And he'd bludgeon them, bludgeon them into paying for expensive, going nowhere, doing nothing, advertising in the trade union monthly magazine bullshit. <clears throat> and um, eventually, the Fed, the, the South Australian government wanted to um, prosecute him for this extortion. But the only witness they had was a woman who he, he actually caused to marry him so that she could not um, be a witness. And that ended the case. But he got on staff in Melbourne and got, got um, access to all of the pre-clear, the clients who were being posted, all of the confidential files. And being a nasty son of a bitch, he uh, ended up then <clears throat> effectively going to the government to bring about and to cause the agitation um, that led to the Victorian government um, bringing suit or causing the inquiry as a left-wing government that the liberal uh, politicians didn't want to know about all this aggravation. But the Labour left-wing government, including communists in, in that lot, <clears throat> they saw this as uh, something that they could make some election brownie points on. And coming up in the election year, they were singing this song of having to investigate Scientology, spurred on by Philip One. Now, what's even can what? I yeah, can I ask you a question? Um, were there public complaints, people who had done Scientology services who said, oh, this was horrible? I mean, no, was there no, anything like that or did he just stir knowledge. this up? <laughs> to my knowledge, the only complaint was Philip Wurns, who had actually written LRH asking for a refund because Scientology had made him lose money because he'd become more ethical. That would figure. <laughs> 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 but he was he an was evil feeling... son of a bitch. Yeah. And, and uh, so he actually was making and carrying the case against Scientology, which the corrupt left wing government in Victoria, who were in power at the time, um, wanted to use as an election issue. You know, okay. because what had happened is there was also a lot of bad press against. Scientology. This is before they became a church, by the way. Right. Um, that's a little story on when and why and how come they became a church, which ties into this. So what happened is the Catholics didn't like the fact that we were coming out. It's rather like going back to, to bloody uh, Copernicus and Galileo times. 
the Catholic Church didn't like the idea that we were trespassing on their spiritual realm. And they were saying you're spiritual and singing a different song. It right. conflicted with their religious beliefs. So they're going, meh, 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 bad, wrong, evil, you know, meh, 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 meh. And uh, there was a guy by the name Dr. Rumble, who was a PhD doctor, but also a you know, religious doctor of, of divinity or something or other. And he was a spokesman for the Catholic Church. He was a priest in the Catholic Church. So he was um, uh, criticizing Scientology and because we were coming out, in his view, as an alternative to their dogma. Okay. That's what actually was part of the setup. So once the, um, the inquiry actually was uh, gazetted as like, we're going to do it uh, by the government, um, my memory gets a bit rusty on all this whole shit, particularly the dates, because I, okay. I don't think I mentioned it last time. I had this spinal operation. And when you go through um, general anesthetic, they've learned recently in America that it causes what's called cognitive decline. So your memory screws up. So I get my dates mixed up quite often, as I did in the last uh, presentation. And trying to put a date on a fact it's like the fact floats around but where was the bloody yeah. date <laughs> rotten no fun so anyway um the, the inquiry gets underway i get subpoenaed oh there's something else that ties into this same memory problems that i wanted to tell you i've been um sharing digs with a guy by name of um memory um it'll come to me though max anderson okay. uh, he was a doctor of Scientology, not a doctor a master of scientology which is the old days we had doctors of scientology master of scientology and shit like that and uh, his wife jenny max was a, a real sweet guy um by profession he was a um industrial chemist we're roughly the same he was a bit older than me but uh, what happened is uh, we used to sit up at stay up at three o'clock in the morning drinking coffee and discussing tech all night and one particular night three in the morning discussing the tech i was looking at <coughs> how come the physical universe persisted good question and in Hubbard's axioms, he actually says that if, um, if the, in the presence of total affinity, reality, and communication, is total love, total being in com communication with thing, and all uh, mechanical conditions of existence would unravel, unlock, blow which is the physical universe, in his view, was a mechanical condition of existence. So I'm looking at this axiom and say, well, if this is true, um, the physical universe must be hanging up because of an ARC break, which is a break in affinity, reality, and communication, which would be total ARCs eh? without that break. And the entire physical universe evaporated. I don't know if I told you that last time, there was nothing. There was just me spiritually and Max spiritually sitting opposite each other. He was in terror. I was in bewilderment. Like hell, there, holy shit! No, it's it's, it's real. <laughs> so I said, my attitude was, I don't have control of this. I better sort of get the physical universe back into persisting, which I was able to do by rekindling agreement to have it persist but actually the physical universe as i'll tell you later on real why it's there it's actually a solution to something that we did not want to experience long long ago uh, and i'll get into that technical point which is something that hubbard never discovered so i'll get into that later so that was max and me <coughs> and um 
So there they announced the um, inquiry and his wife then tries to seduce me apparently and I said no bloody way Max is my mate and I don't do that kind of thing. She still uh, persists on with the uh, false accusation and spread it among some other people who were on the borderlines of Scientology and it came up as part of and in the inquiry you're trying to discredit me and my evidence. I, I, the false accusation was I was trying to seduce uh, um, Max's wife, Jenny. Right. But the guy that was pushing all of this bullshit was Max Wern. He actually, sorry, not Max Wern, Phil, Will, Phil uh, Wern. He actually was conducting the interrogation of Scientology witnesses as though he was the prosecutor. Exactly. And that, that amazed me when I was reading um, Steve Kaneen's book, uh, Fair Game, right there, where Steve actually digs into the whole inquiry, goes through all the original papers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I noticed that the Phil Wounds, he's not even a government person, but he got it started, and there he is doing questioning. Yeah. So, yeah. So By the, the way... By the way, Steve Kinane is an Australian journalist, right, Janice? Who yes, he book. is. Yeah, he yeah, we've we'll had him on our channel. He's a sweetheart of a guy. I mean, he's got my ult complete ultimate trust. A class act. He he went. Uh, he apparently last I heard, he's in London as the uh, Australian cor uh, correspondent for the Australian uh, Broadcasting Commission. Yeah, he's he told actually us when we interviewed. Going Ukraine. Go yeah, he's been going to Ukraine and covering the war, the war over there oh, from really? London. Yeah, yeah, so he goes into the war zone and uh, well, reports on it. Well, guess guess what? It turned out <clears throat> that Steve is also a member of my old Bonnie Surf Club, Bonnie Surf Club <laughs> Seven Club. Small world. And yeah. Uh, his daughter, we call, we used to call him uh, tadpoles. Still call them tadpoles. The kids, they're actually members. Yeah. They get trained at eight years old. You got to learn to do resuscitate, a whole bloody thing. So it's a real family affair. So, Can I ask you a question, Roger? No. Can I ask a question? I just want to make sure I understand. This inquiry was in Melbourne, right? In yeah, state. Melbourne. And what, what state of Australia is that? or what? what Victoria. Victoria. Okay. Yeah. Now, is it the part like do you have a, a council that a uh, government council or what? What is it? I don't, well, it's I don't state know. State government, government, like was. the Californian State Congress, or the New York State Assembly. Okay, so it was a government inquiry. Oh yeah. It, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Got Part it. Okay. The Victorian okay. Parliament. Got it. It wasn't I'm, a court case. It was an actual like no. like if you know, like we have congressional hearings here. I guess say you know. Say yeah. Type of thing. Okay. <clears throat> And Phil Wern was appointed and allowed by them to conduct his part of the inquiry into Scientology and me uh, as though he was like a government prosecutor, for Christ's sake. Now, the whole thing was a setup and bent. They weren't interested in finding out the truth of Scientology or any truth for that matter. All they were interested in doing is getting embarrassing and incriminating kind of evidence. Uh, there was a headline once it got going uh, on the accusation and ridiculing of um, a household painter, a tradesman who painted houses for a living, claims that he was a spaceship jockey in a full, you know, yep, 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 this sort of stuff. Well, now that you bring up the press, Roger, I remember as a kid, you know, through that inquiry, I was like seven, eight, nine years old. And so going to school and my parents being on the news because of the inquiry, it actually got to a point where other kids wouldn't talk to us. Their yeah. parents were telling them, stay away from the Gillum children. You know, it's as if we came, we were witches or, you know, something like that. You had, yeah, four horns. And that, that's another class act there in that photo, mate, Yvonne. Yes. Your mother. Yes, she she so is. Total was. star. Um, total star. So that was the inquiry. It was a witch hunt. Uh, 
only conducted in order to embarrass the church and Jenny um, Anderson um, had put her false accusation against me into the inquiry to try and discredit me and um, I said it's not a bullshit and etc 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 and um, and you and I was challenged, so you deny it? I said, of course, under oath I deny it and say it didn't happen. And what you have from her is a statement not under oath yet. Right. You know, so get her yeah, up. Yeah, I get it. And put yeah. her under oath. So anyway, that was that. And I did my thing on the inquiry. Two bloody days. A waste of time, interrogation, and false accusations and all the rest of it. And... Uh, so uh, that, that was the extent of the Melbourne Inquiry. It was just simply a witch hunt, Jack Kangaroo Court. And this church itself put out a publication with kangaroos on the court, on the cover, and they labeled it a kangaroo court, and it was. It was just, yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. Well, what well, was the and, result? Go ahead, Jess. Well, yeah, yeah, well, that was 1963 late 63 the inquiry was conducted right and then the report came out from uh, mr justice injustice uh, anderson <laughs> in 64 um and uh, by that time i was planning my trip by ship to uh london for the briefing course that was but the other right. thing about how come the church got into creating this facade of being a religion was while I was on staff in Melbourne. Uh, coincidentally, the FDA did a raid on the Washington DC has he? Right. Right. And, um, and Hubbard at that stage recognized that the way to protect his little operation was to create it as a religion because under the US Constitution, a religion has ultimate, unchallengeable uh, privilege and the right to practice what it believes, and the government cannot interfere, voice right. an opinion, do bloody nothing. And that actually came about before the inquiry was um, um, prosecuted in Melbourne. Right. Very long before, it was 1963. Um, so then we began to sort of consider ourselves a religion, which I was not particularly religious. Um, most Australians were not, except the Catholics. But um, can, can I ask you, Roger? Um, yeah. Did you consider it more at that time period, more of it like a self-help type of um, organization in terms of yeah. people go there and get counseling yeah. and help, if, but not, not worship God or anything like that? Well, Scientology does not worship a God. No, exactly. No, but I mean, they weren't you're a right. church then, right? They weren't a church then, so they didn't really talk about God. You, you know, no. before before he made them a church. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I found it embarrassing to um, be considered a, a religion. To be honest, I was not particularly religious. You know, Roger. Roger, I think you made a really good point, and it, and it's carried on throughout the years. Um, you know, the fact that they were recognized as a religion eventually here in the United States by the Internal Revenue Service has given them unlimited legal protection from lawsuits sure. and they different things that are going on. They get away with all sorts of things under the veil of we are a religion recognized by the Internal Revenue Service. When yeah. in actuality, they're really, if you were just going to take Scientology on its own, it really is just a self-help organization like other self-help organizations it's not a church or a religion yeah i mean there are a lot of similar outfits running in america right now which are not touting their re religious religiosity or whatever you want of their religiousness um it's the new age thing they're all running yeah. around saying we're spiritual we're immortal spiritual presences um and that's the reality now let's Let's kick science out of the uh, right. community wisdom because that's a dogma, which is bullshit. 
scientism, as it's called now, you know, running around saying that all you are is a meat body and a bunch of atoms in happy collision in your head. I mean, that's actually what, what the guys who uh, stole the, um, stole the uh, X-ray images of DNA and then were able to put the chemical labels on the parts that were Crick and Watson um, bullshit. So now they come up with DNA. That's the, that's what makes a body, and it determines what you think. And yep, 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 yep. So it's it's that's that's the scientific dogma at the moment, which uh, a lot of the new age people are challenging. Which is a position Scientology was in 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 uh, the fifties and sixties. Right. Let me ask. Uh, let me ask a practical. So I'm sorry. Let me ask a practical question to you, Janice, because like you said, your your mother and father had uh, a Dianetics group, right, in, in, in the Melbourne area. Is that right? Um, yes. What was, the effect, what was the effect of the inquiry on them being able to, you know, teach Dianetics or whatever was going on? Yeah, well, during the inquiry, and Hobbit and Mary Sue had actually encouraged everyone to go to the inquiry and answer their questions because they felt this was their chance to finally get their truth out and their belief as to what Scientology was all about. But with Philip Warren doing his questioning, it went a different direction. And um, it actually got to a point where people were hiding that they were doing Scientology because in the, at the end of 65, though Anderson who did the investigation said, do not stop or ban Scientology. A year later, it was actually banned in the state of Victoria. And so my parents, they had their center going, but my mom had then gotten accused of um, ripping PCs off from the Hazy when she wasn't, it was just her public didn't want to stay at the Hazy. They wanted to come back to the mission because they didn't like the service at the Hazy. They preferred the the Nick group. There's a picture of them there. And um, so she ended up getting declared and couldn't deal with the declare. So she ended up going to St. Hill to try and handle the declare. And people had were being told to disconnect from her and the mission People were like, they were still trying to audit. But when the ban came out, we actually had the police showing up at different people's homes, banging on the door to see if we were practicing Scientology or not. Wow. Yeah, I was and, out of by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, you were gone like, by then. Janice, that sounds like the stuff that happens in, in you know, communist Russia and the Soviet oh. Union. And, even yeah. even Nazi Germany, you know, like knocking on the door and burning the books and all that sort of thing. That's crazy. Well, talk about burning. We end up doing a big bonfire and everyone, you know, all the PC folders are at the bottom of the bonfire to kind of get rid of the evidence because in the ban, it's also Scientology is being accused of auditing people to find out their crimes so they can use it as blackmail. Awesome. And that was that was done. <laughs> I mean, it was a very valid point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what uh, Janice? What? So so what would they threaten people with or with Roger? Um, you know, like let's say the police came and you were practicing Scientology. What, could they arrest you and put you in jail? Was it a fine? What What was the punishment that could have happened? I heard I, it was arrest. I don't know. Janice yeah. might not. I was out of yeah. Oz at this, this stage of the game. Right. Well, I heard it was arrest, but no one got arrested because we, the, all the PC folders were burnt. Or, like I know Noel Barton, he buried his under a compost pile in his backyard. And then, <laughs> as as for the e meters, my dad rented a station wagon and put all the e meters at the bottom of the station wagon and camping gear on top. And he, with my sister, drove over to South Australia to Adelaide. Yeah to to get the e-meters safe over there yeah yeah ron ron budgeon who was my business partner in england well i think he was on that trip 
Yeah, well, that's who dad was with. Yes, was Roger. Ron, Ron Budgen, who's now dead. Uh, Ron Budgen, yeah. Yeah, good guy. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I was going to say, you know, these really, this really looks like a group of subversives, uh, subversives hippies, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, very evil looking lot. <laughs> very evil. I mean, this looks like any Sunday school or Sunday church group. <laughs> it, yeah, it was. And actually, some people, you know, old timers out there will know Rosemary um, Delterfield. Yeah. And that's her in the front on the right hand side, the lady there. At that time, she was dating Noel Barton, who's in the middle. He's the stepfather of Liz Ingber and Jeanette Alcock and uh, Marion Witcher. And his, is the, his son is the one that's missing, Andrew Barton. Right. And then in, in the far right in the front, some people will probably remember Blake Huffam. Yeah. And, and oh. then behind, yeah. Yeah, that's Blake did there. Know, did you know Blake, Roger? I knew of him. I probably ran across him once or twice, but uh, okay. not somebody I knew well. <clears throat> right. And then directly, but, well, behind Blake at the very end of the photo, that's my mom, and my dad is right next to her in the back. Right. Yeah. And, and all the others, I, I don't remember all their names. They were always in and out or sitting there telling the ashtray to stand up or sit down in the course room. Yeah, a real motley <laughs> crew that. You're real right, motley. Yeah, then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so then, okay, so Victoria banned Scientology, right, and made it illegal. So how 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 long did it take for that to get? Because it obviously got overturned at some point, right, Janice? Well, this well, it was December. My mom left Australia December of '65 to go to Saint Hill, and that was right around the time the ban came in. And so what ended up happening is all the families that were in Victoria that were Scientologists end up packing up. And my, mo my mom was in England getting them places to stay. And my dad was in Australia helping them. And they sent over 100 families from Melbourne to East Grinstead. Oh, wow. And it wasn't until around 68, I believe, um, when my dad, after he left the Sea Org, he ended up um, going back to England and the Guardian's office wanted him to go on a mission to Melbourne to handle the ban. So he shows up and here it is, banned cult is back and will stay. And uh, there's, my, there's my dad in the picture. And, and he and Ron Budgen did this together. Um, Roger, you mentioned Ron. Yeah. <clears throat> he, yeah, he, there's my dad. So Henry warns the cult to stay out. My dad's, you know, giving flippant answers back. And uh, Victoria's warning to Scientology. And I found all this stuff um, after my dad died. All this stuff was in his garage. He had a whole um, album there of it. Scientologists to investigate our leader. So that's where the GO has them now saying, well, we're going to investigate the parla parliament, Victorian parliament. And um, <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, it just goes on and on with my dad. He kept uh, a scrapbook here of the different stuff. So how Cold did it head get overturned? Was it just, was the he, Guardian yeah, was office. Successful? Yeah. Well, yeah, and through through the courts and so forth, they got it all overturned. And I think that was around 68, 69. But all those hundreds of families had already packed up and moved on and gone to England. People with that, people like the Rinders, Mike Rinders family and, and, and uh, the Bartons, that type of thing. Yeah, but Rinders family was from South Australia and so they probably... Cheaper. Well, there was another ban, another ban in South Australia and another ban in Western Australia. Okay. And so we had, there was three states where Scientology was banned. And that's where gradually people started going over to England because of the ban. I got it. But not Sydney, New South Wales. Which no. I, that stayed intact, interestingly enough. Yep. Yeah. So that's, that's, that part of the, the Scientology history. 
Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and you know what? I cover it. I also cover it a lot in my book, book one. And you can get that book. Just go down below in the description. Our merchandise store is there. Click on it. You can get an autographed copy of Janice's book, Commodore's Messenger. Right, Janice? Yes, they can. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So Australia has actually been in the forefront of trying to get rid of Scientology because, I mean, years later in the 2000s, um, was it uh, Neil Z Nick Xenophone was a senator yeah. in Australia, and he caused in 2007, 2008, quite a lot of inquiries into Scientology. And then there's been reporters. Um, who's the reporter, the TV reporter? There's a lot of reporters. Have been, Brian, Brian Seymour, right? You yeah, know, in Brian Australia, Seymour. They've been pretty active in investigating uh, Scientology and the abuses that have gone on there. So right. they've the crimes they actually well. commit, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the org does not, or yes, the org now, the org does not have clean hands. No. That's the tragedy of it. Um, right. It, it could have actually been a good thing. It's turned into quite a bad thing. And the tech, as I mentioned last time, if we get to talking about it uh, and this recording, uh, is booby trap. There's tremendous errors in it, which are actually damaging people, which I can delineate. It's, this ain't a speculation or Roger's opinion. It's actually uh, crazy shit. Right. And, and just like you said, Janice, <laughs> you know, they were investigating because Scientology was using the auditing sessions. They were afraid they'd use the information given as blackmail material. Well, that's gone on to this day. You know what I mean? They've never stopped that. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, well, that's they how they do keep it. people in line. Yeah, well, they do it yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And David Mayo even told me he he never used to write certain things down in PC folders because he knew the GO would try and hold it against the person if they found out about it. Yeah. They use the it on G leverage, as leverage. Yep. Yeah. The GO being Guardian's office and what is now called Office of Special Affairs, OSA. That's right. That's right. Well, yeah. Roger, uh, we will go now into, you've got some questions I think you wanted to answer from our view, the viewers well, from the last time. In, in reading the uh, responses to the earlier video, yeah, there, there are a couple of quick questions I'll answer. The... Um, of course, the org changed the way we referred to it once Hubbard brought, in 1965 put out the uh, organizational board and um, and uh, the levels of awareness of how you organize an organizational uh, structure. And uh, so then it became the org. We abbreviated every, we used to abbreviate everything. But prior to that, it was always called the HAZI. And uh, the big error in um <clears throat> the biggest era the tragic era of of Scientology where it all gets trapped is that um Hubbard dreamt up this and it's what did him in in the long run uh dreamt up this notion of that we're infested with body thetans right body thetans being conceived of as by Hubbard as being like vermin they're in your way and, and, and effectively infecting your well-being. Well, that's a pretty narrow bloody view and a negative destructive view of the human condition. Now, we ain't saints and we ain't in a perfect condition, but let me tell you something. In 1977, when I was on OT, OT3, I was trying to run the OT3 rundown on a particular spiritual presence that I had perceived was about me and connected to me on the basis that it might have been a body thetan as, as they refer to it. And I'm doing the rundown on the bloody thing, which was a date and locate. What is the date of the incident it's stuck in and where is it? <clears throat> Wouldn't run. Would not run. And uh, got all bad indicators from it and on me and then I got smart because I'd already un vanished the physical universe in in 63 with Max Anderson I'd actually gone through an an actual death sequence 
drowning in, in Bronte Beach surf, got trapped behind the reef and uh, found myself as a pure spiritual presence, aware, able to make decisions and decide what did I want to do. I mean, that gives you some rude awakenings uh, and I can talk about those things later. So I had the spiritual awareness that there was something more than the physical universe that we were stuck in. So I asked the question of my spiritual connection. Is this an earlier universe you're in? Well, the, the e meter e was so big, it almost fell off the bloody table. And you really feel the uh, discharge of the in, uh, insistent spiritual life force that gets hung up with these guys. So it blew off and I realized, my God, there are earlier universes than this physical universe. We're all running around thinking it's a big deal. So that changed my attitude a lot. Um, and the reason I make this point is that this particular spiritual connection was not a body thing, but nothing to do with my body. And from that moment on, all the spiritual presences that I connected to process and free off were not body thetans, they were spiritual connections in the larger realm of our true omnipresent spiritual presence. And uh, that opens up a whole new deal. Now, Hubbard in his dying days was railing on about these... Um, I forgot what I read an Exontology member board, somebody who was describing Hubbard's final years. He was not oh, screaming, screaming, yeah. screaming out his body things because they'd done him in. Right. And all he had to do was recognize that they're not just body things affixed to your body according to your dopey implant bullshit. They are spiritual connections and I can tell you how you collected them and when you collected them, because we did this research later on. Uh, Alan Walter wrote it up very well. <clears throat> and I've, I'm a member of a number of scientific uh, bodies, for example, uh, one in London called the uh, Scientific and Med Medical Network. And uh, we're dealing with PhD types. Bloody dreary lot. Um, but they're into <clears throat> looking at what is the true nature of our spiritual nature, powers and conditions. Well, that's been my research gig since 1957 as right. an athlete. What I wanted to know was what is my true powers and abilities to perform? Well, having traveled around the world and investigated all this stuff, I find that as a spiritual presence, we are infinite in our scope. We are not pinned anywhere in time where we in fact created time. I can tell you, I can tell your members exactly how and when and by what mechanism we actually created time, which was created before space was created. The physical scientists have it back to front. They call it space time. Uh, time was created first, then space was created. Uh, we can verify that. We have all of this written up. It's on my uh, research forum. I've got a whole team of uh, summer ex Scientology, summer scientists. Right. And we deal with this on a daily, weekly basis. The first thing I do each day is go into my forum and talk to the fellow researchers on these subjects. Now, uh, you, you as a job are a consultant, is that correct? As a job, I was a management consultant. I retired as a uh, fellow of the British Institute of Management when I came to the US here in 80, whatever. About 82, I ended retiring from that lot. Yeah, so my fun okay. in life is investigation and research. Yeah, so I just, just to put it here, I think I know what you're talking about, Roger, which is that Hubbard was always looking into, you know, we're a yeah. spiritual being, we have abilities, and there's things that are impeding those spirit, those abilities, yada, yada, yada. When you left, you and Alan Walters and other people decided we're going to continue to research this on yeah. our own. And so you're, you went down a different 
different road trying to figure this stuff out yeah. and you have come to various discoveries that you feel are valid right obviously yeah. you agree with them right but cool. um but you haven't but they haven't really got been been promoted broadly or anything like that well um i'm in the process of writing it all up in a book well no i'm not i'm not criticizing that i'm just yeah. saying there are people out there like you that are constantly asking question who are we why yeah. are we here right Who does it you know i'm just talking for our viewers out there they're yeah. constantly questioning you know why are we here is there a heaven is there a hell is you know where because a lot of this stuff is stuff that's been handed down over the years and you can look into it yourself and decide whether or not it's true or not true or false yeah. right and you've just been on a journey of continuing to research for yourself and others i take it is that right yeah uh, we've written it up and also what we've done is develop the procedures or processes by which you can with certainty uh, address your spiritual capacities abilities and powers and virtues like love and knowledge and kindness and shit like that um, and you can address all of these factors of your existence and make more of them empower them and be able to run your life better and be more successful not a bad idea be positive you see <laughs> And when I connected with Alan Walter and, and reconnected, because I first met him in, in Melbourne in, in, the, in the 60s, and um, he was an impressive kind of a guy at that time. And what happened when I reconnected in, in uh, 94 in Dallas, because uh, he, he knew of me and we connected up again in London when I was running things in London, um, he said to me, um, Rog, the good thing about Scientology is, is, it, is that it taught us all the wrong answers. And I said, which specific ones? He said, well, its practice is looking for all the negatives. And what they should be doing is looking for the positives to then enhance and make more of. That's not a bad idea. No, yeah. not at all. He's right on that. But that yeah. was no, I mean, that's you're true. always Scientology, you're always looking back and back and back all the past lives and you know, when did it all start? And, and there's no looking what did you forward. Do on, you know, trying to find the bad well, thing on an Yeah, I know and and in, and also the way that Hubbard had Scientology, how the auditing worked was you were trying to address some problem the person had and what were the reasons for that? Like you said, Janice, and you go back and back and back rather than looking forward going like, okay, well, here I am now, where am I going? Yeah. Is that what you're saying, Roger? In other words, you're looking forward rather than looking back. Yeah. You find out what the guy's purposes, dreams and aspirations are. What does he want to handle in life? And uh, we've got the ways to empower his pursuit of what he wants smart idea and that way yeah, no, it's kind of it's kind of like walking and i'm a victim and, and now hubbard bogged is a victim it's kind of like to give somebody just a, a something a kind of a correlation in life right in managing a business or your life or whatever you can actually people study other people who are successful to find out what their successful actions right. are and then try and duplicate them for themselves. That's looking forward as opposed to going like well, this, <coughs> this business failed. Why did it fail? And looking at all the things that were wrong with it. You know what I mean? Instead yeah. of looking at what was right about this guy over here and then taking those on. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I used to, I, well, I still do. I, you know, I try and stick with the positive postulates. Yeah. You know, being positive of, to what I want to achieve, and right. I don't, I don't look back, and I, yeah. and I tell myself I can do things, sure. and I push myself out of the comfort zone. Yep, and that was what, one of the things I uh, perceived, and spiritually I perceive what people are intending, and emanating, or you could say the word emanating or envisioning, um, as a concept that they want to bring about and you can actually read people's uh 
emanations that way. It's easy to do. And that's, right. that's why you can get into agreement with another spiritual presence. Of course, if you're insane, you, you, impose, you oppose others and try and make them wrong. That was Hubbard's trick, making other bloody people wrong all the time. Right. And you know, the, another another example is in the tech world right now. You know what I mean? Like they're always looking forward to electric vehicles, uh, the Internet, uh, communication through satellites, looking forward. Uh, now it's artificial intelligence. And how can that help, you know, us as a society and people and all that rather than, you know, other things? They're looking forward to on things like that. Mm. That's what a scientist does and a researcher does. Yeah. Now, the other things that came up uh, and looking at the notes from uh, the last presentation, somebody um, asked the question about study tech and where did it come that's, from? Yep, well, that's I can right. tell you that um, it actually, the study tech was introduced to Hubbard by two special briefing course attendees. At, well, I'm... Ch Chuck and Eva Berners, and they actually had uh, dinner with Alan Walter and um, another guy whose, whose name I've forgotten now. Never met the other guy, but he's an American. <clears throat> and they were dining in, in 40s, which is a, sort of a hamburger joint in East Grinstead. And Chuck mentioned that he, and Chuck was an actual educator. And uh, he mentioned that he passed on that day to Hubbard, um, that afternoon to Hubbard, um, his data on study. And he told Alan what it was. That night, Hubbard lectured as though it was his discovery of the study tech. And Alan just felt sick because and, and Chuck Berners felt very betrayed. Now, the trouble was that Hubbard screwed it up. Um, if you um, recall what you were taught and read on the subject of Hubbard's study tech, it's all about <laughs> handling misunderstood words. Right, right. <clears throat> well, if you go to uh, YouTube, type in my name, and then look for the presentation, a video, it's, it's an hour long, uh, in YouTube under the title, um, How to Learn, How to Teach, Overcoming the Seven Barriers to Comprehension. Now, that's a workshop I did based on my book titled How to Learn, How to Teach, Overcoming the Seven Barriers to Comprehension. And um, it's in there. And when you see that um, workshop, I created a drill for the attendees who were all tutors, professional tutors, for an outfit called Learning Partners, where Virginia used to, um, as a charitable action, um, deliver tutorship. <clears throat> and in the drill, I actually have them experience the thing that Hubbard missed, uh, altered. <clears throat> and that is, he actually said that misunderstood words cause you to go drowsy and fall asleep, right? You all remember that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, it's not a bloody misunderstood, does it? What it is is a failed to comprehend. It's a non-understood. And the me mechanism behind that is that you have a purpose when you're studying, you want to learn something. And if you collide with something you don't understand, it's a failed purpose. And that kills your life, the spiritual life force. That's why you go unconscious. Hubbard utterly missed that. And what happened is some old Scientologists saw my um, video I'm, I'm introducing you to. And the guy e emailed me and he said, my God, he said, I did not know that the study he called them study barriers, but the barriers of comprehension include non-defined terms. They cause you to go mentally blank. In fact, right. in, my, see, in my book, I write it up. I, I, I simply say, in the presence of words for which you do not have 
a clear comprehension or definition of what the term is it includes it includes um, punctuation the student goes mentally blank incompetent and is unable to perform that's what I actually wrote right, in the book. right. but I, right. I don't understand something Roger how is that any different than to go back and find out what you didn't understand and then get an understanding for that. How is that different than finding a word you didn't understand and clearing that up and then- Well, you, there's there's the error in what you just said. Both expressions was didn't understand, which is a non-comprehension. What I'm differentiating the non-comprehension from is the misunderstood, which is in my lecture, a misunderstood if you're operating on misunderstoods, wrongly understoods, you screw up, you make mistakes. If you uh, don't have an understanding of a word, you are incompetent and unable to perform. Very no, I understand that. He just called it a misunderstanding or a misunderstood word. But if there were a word that you had no understanding of, you had to look that up and clear it. You had no well, understanding. If, if you did that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, the, you know. I, I understand. You know, the other thing I was going to mention, too, you mentioned that Hubbard took that, right, from somebody who mentioned it to him. He took it from, um, yeah. Well, but he did the same thing. He did the same thing with the uh, the e-meter. That was, uh, what, Matheson developed yeah. the e-meter. Then Hubbard yeah. took it over and bought it out or whatever and then said it was his invention and moved, carried on from there, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah he did that with a few things. And, and he did do that. And that was one of the things that when I read Russell Miller's book after I left Scientology, the Sea Organization, you know, Barefaced Messiah, is I, I actually was learning his history, Hubbard's history in the 50s and the 40s and the 50s, and found that anybody who was helping him at the time, financially or whatever, to start his Dianetics Research Foundation, or whatever, they would be like the, his best, biggest benefactors. Then the next thing you knew, they were the biggest traders, they were communists, and he was turning them into <clears throat> hearings and this and that. I went, you know, that's the same pattern that he followed his whole life. Because that's he yeah. did the same thing to David Mayo. He did the same thing to other people who were dedicated to him, and they were the greatest thing going. And then as soon as he perceived them to be an enemy, he threw them out like a piece of trash. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, thing well, that I'm I'm not sure on is that uh, we know that um, was it Ray Kemp or yeah Ray and Pam Kemp. They were from um, San Diego Mission Holes. Orange. Yeah. On Orange County, Tuscany. Yeah, Tuscany. well, you know, I was thinking of something. Else. The guy that loaned Hubbard the money uh, as a mortgage to buy the uh, St. Hill is an English. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Neville Chamberlain yeah. told Neville Chamberlain told us that story, Janice. Right? Neville. Yeah. Yeah. I I've forgotten his name now. Um, Don Purcell was another guy who who financed the and then bought Dianetics, the research, the Dianetics Foundation in Wichita. I know that. Red, Red Sharp. Red, Red Sharp. Uh, you got right. it. Red Sharp, his secretary. Yeah. He got shut upon yeah. as well. But yeah. here's a stinker. You know how Hubbard felt about the communists. In fact, if you had a, any communist connections or communist history or sympath sympathies, you became a, a legal PC. You weren't allowed on lines, right? Yeah. So guess who the church hired as Mary Sue's. This is what I found out when I did my investigation. Uh, hired for Mary Sue's uh, lawyer or attorney to defend her in the case against what put her in jail. You don't know who. No, I can tell no. you. His name was Leonard Bowden. He was the registered agent, because if you register, if you represent any overseas government or whatever, you actually have to register th that connection as a registered agent in, right. in America. Well, he was a registered registered agent for Castro and Q and the Cuban government. Oh, interesting. And guess his daughter was uh, Kathy Bowden, who was the leader of the Weather Underground terrorist group that uh, shot up a Brinks armored uh, truck, killed the, killed the crew, 
and made off of five million dollars here in America. And that is who the church hired to represent and protect Mary Sue and, and her travails with the with the uh, U.S. government. No, it's it's the same thing with the attorneys they hire. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, Jerry Pfeffer and Monique Yingling, who are, who are the tax attorneys that they hired, Miss Gavage hired, you know what I mean? She's been his attorney ever since. And they make millions and millions and millions of dollars representing this uh, and defending Miss Gavage and what he's doing. And why? Because they, they worked for the IRS. They used to be in the Department of Justice. I mean, they had all these government connections, you know. Yeah. But I was going to yeah. say, I was going to say, mm -hmm. Just to go back just one second here on Scientology, right? Hubbard took these different things. I mean, he even said it, but but also he took things from different people. And then he, we all started on that path. Roger, you did too. We all started on that path. We had gains, we had wins and stuff like that. But his paranoia, and like you said, his mistakes that he made is what led to his downfall. I mean, he set up the church to defend everything and all that, but then he was so paranoid, he would attack anybody who was, you know, a supporter or a, um, one of his key people, as soon as he thought that they were against him, he was just, he was just paranoid, you know, and, and that, that was and, his undoing. <clears throat> and those people weren't against him. No. Right. But, you know, it's like you look at Ken Urquhart. Ken was so loyal to him. You know, even I was loyal to him. My mother was loyal to him. You know, Mary Sue was loyal to him and David Mayo. And it's like, as you get too close to him and then he doesn't protect, he throws you under the bus, you know, and does not protect you. Yeah. And, and, and if you think about it, Roger, if, if, if there was some truth and we, we all thought there was some truth to this, right. That, that, that there should have been compassion and good intentions to carry on to yeah. continue research like that you say you're doing and that type of thing. To, to basically, you know, handle more and, and make everybody, not just the wealthy and well-to-do, but everybody better in this life, you know? But that no. wasn't his viewpoint. His viewpoint is we're helping the able become more able, screw the people who are downtrodden. We're just going to keep forward, move forward what we got because there was money involved and his <clears throat> ego involved, you know? And that was his PR line, helping the able be more able. Of course, you love that line <laughs> since you are <laughs> all about the money. money. Yeah. Oh. Count me in. <laughs> you know what was what was funny is when we were in African countries, Mary Sue was known for giving beggars money and stuff, and Hubbard would always tell her off for it. But she, she, she enjoyed doing it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, was what we just talked about this in our in our video we did with another gentleman yesterday. Scientology. My dad told me this after he loved Scientology. He said, "You know what was missing from Scientology?" He said, "The the um, the concept of love and compassion. You know, uh, there was ARC, but that's not the same thing as love, and it's also right. not the same thing as being compassionate towards people that need help. You know, and and honor. They didn't honor anybody, and didn't right. particularly honor anybody else's accomplishments. I mean." Right. They get hold of somebody like a John Travolta, um, and they hang 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 him up as some sort of a uh, testimony of the value of the subject. Right. Well, Travolta accomplished what he accomplished because he accomplished it long before, you know. And that's the way they were, they used me and Oz as an Australian champion. Look at Roger. You know, he's a Scientologist. You should be too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not no fun being used by the bastards like that. Um, and, and that was Hubbard's gig. Are there any other questions you wanted to cover? Because we're getting here towards the end. Um, I was going to do a timeline uh, uh, correcting his tech, but that's a, that's a, that's the a subject. The fact okay. is... Uh, He's not, Scientology does not address or at all correctly, but does not address that which needs to be addressed in order to enhance an individual. It's all premised on the notion that uh, there's bad, wrong and evil in there that's got to be eradicated. And that's a wrong indication. There's a lot of people who are quite sweet souls and uh, you can look at the good that they are accomplishing and their power, spiritual power, 
I mean, I have a whole team, probably 10 to 20, uh, that I'm regularly each week in, in touch with, coaching, and we're using the drills and procedures that uh, have been developed. Alan Wald developed a lot of it. I've developed a lot of it. <clears throat> and we've been exchanging notes. In fact, the truth is, I forget the bloody year now. It's probably 10 years ago now. Alan and I were exchanging research notes. And um, this is all in writing. It's on the forum that I conduct. <clears throat> And um, so he said, thanks for the research notes, Rox. This will help. This should help a lot, help us a lot. And then he sent me his notes on the list of our spiritual abilities and powers. Um, and um, I replied, that's good, except we're missing a key point, And that is, as spiritual presences, we are gifted of, or we have infinite potential. That's the one thing he missed. Now, as I wrote to him, I said, potential is a big word, which the stem word is potent. We are potent. As long as we understand that and can use our potency and then manifest our as we choose our true potential, we can perform miracles. And we, we, we got guys who can be healed or we're healing others telepathically across distance. That can be done. Right. Roger, I'm assuming, Roger, that you believe in past lives. In other words, you're, when you drop this body, you'll pick up another one. Or, or, or well, I, I, went through, I went through an actual death in April 1963. I got trapped. What happened? I'd been down in, 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 in Melbourne for a couple of years and I had not swum. I'd not been in the water for a couple of years. So I was visiting home my old, with my mother in the old apartment at the beach where I grew up with Bronte. <clears throat> and I've mentioned to you there's that uh, Trans, trans -Tasman, Tasman Express. So we went out surfing me just in my swimsuit and my buddy with a pair of fins on his feet and uh, battling the rip and being out of condition I thought oh shit I'm in trouble here the, the, the rip got hold of me and was taking me out behind the reef on the southern end of the beach and I began to become alerted that it was getting the better of me and I knew what that could mean the nearest place right. where I could have safely got back in on land was not on Bronte, I was headed off into the bloody Pacific. So the safest place I could get would have been about three miles south at a place called Coogee, if the surf was not beating that to shit. Otherwise, it was go down to Malabar or about five miles. And um, my mood dropped and I went through apprehension into like, holy shit, into a fear feeling of literally losing it. And I found myself out of the body, um, literally out of the body, feeling that I died because <clears throat> I'd already been hit by a lot of big waves, so bloody big waves. And um, so I'm spiritually aware that I'm a spiritual presence because I'd already gone through a past death. And um, so then I began to look at, okay, where am I and where can I get in? So I was, as a spiritual being, looking at all the neighboring beaches, which I was very familiar with, like I either fished on them or surfed on them or whatever. And um, then I decided, I, I realized I could actually, as a spiritual presence, make decisions. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to get back into the game of life, uh, physical planet earth so i went looking for my next body that's a trick and um this this part of you will remember uh janice i there was no body in brisbane but down in the melbourne environment there was a, a woman having a child to be born 
1963. Helen Meadmore. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Simon. Well, Roger Meadmore, her husband, yeah. ran, ran a, the, the franchise of the mission in Geelong. So I perceived this body, said, good, in Scientology family, they know how to raise kids. In I go, picked up the body. But then I found out it was a female. Oh. Um, <laughs> sorry, girls, but in 1963, the girls didn't have much fun. All they could do was sit on the beach, try and look pretty, while all the boys went surfing or played rugby or whatever they did. I said, screw that for an idea of fun. So I, I let go of that and I decided maybe I can use the waves to lift me up over the reef I'm now trapped behind because it was a reef I'd fished on and, and whatnot, rock hopped and everything, but not with these monster bloody waves hitting it. So I get washed up on that, cut my big toe on the way out. In 1982, I'm down at in Florida and flag and flag and this woman is walking toward me that I sort of recognized I never met her before and I said hello you seem familiar who are you and she said Helen Traxel from Melbourne I said no I don't know you Helen I, I was on staff in Melbourne for a couple of years she said you might have known me as Helen Meadmore uh -huh. that was her bloody <laughs> that was the mother I said Helen <laughs> Meadmore <laughs> Let me tell you a story. So I told them of effectively inhabiting and picking up the daughter she was about to produce back in 63. She blew her mind. She was laughing all over because she was an OT. She was laughing yeah. all over the place and going, that's hilarious. I've got to tell Sammy, was the nickname of her daughter, Samantha, I think it was. Uh, we became dear friends. That's the first time we'd met. So that's the sort of capacities and, and, and powers that you can exhibit once you right. clean up and get real about who and what you really are. Most people have no clue. Okay, great. Well, that's a good point for us to stop. Go ahead, Janice. Funny you bring up Helen because when my mom moved to Melbourne, she and Helen started a wedding counseling business. Uh -huh. and, and then... Um, Helen had just bought a new house and she was pregnant at the time. So it would have been 63 and we'd just gotten back from um, Australia, uh, Brisbane. And my brother and sister and I went over to Helen's because she's, there was this whole, this big bird cage and she told us to go in and pick a bird each. So we did, we went in and she wouldn't go in. She was afraid of the birds. Anyway, we went in and got a bird each and she didn't know what to do with the rest of the birds, but us kids handled that for her. We <laughs> left the door open <laughs> and all the birds flew out. <laughs> what sort of birds were they? Finches or they, they're pretty birds? Were they? Budgies. They, oh, they budgies. were budgies. No, yeah. Good fun. Yeah, they weren't, yeah. They weren't right. edibles. <laughs> well, well, that's a good point to end here, okay, on this video. Roger, we want to thank you for being here again, talk, talking about the Australia ban and also about your further ex exploits and uh, research and that type of thing. Uh, if anybody's here, if you could please subscribe to our channel, hit that subscribe button, click that like button too. It really helps us get more people watching our video. So we'd appreciate that. If you have more questions for Roger, just ask in the comment section down below. As you can see, Roger reads them, we read them, and we will answer them. So please go down there below and ask away. And if you'd like to support our channel, you can buy us a coffee. There's a link in the description down there. You just click on it. You can buy us one, two, three, five coffees. We don't really drink coffee, but it's just a way for people to send support to the by channel. The way, so we appreciate that. By yes, the right. way, I have something to say on uh, Genesis um, Koala Calm. Yeah. Uh, it's The deal is, is that uh, most people, nearly all people, adults in America are deficient on magnesium, particularly the women. Women actually actually require a greater percentage of magnesium in their system than the men. And um, it's actually responsible for facilitating something in the order of 300 enzymes in the system. And if you don't have enough magnesium, 
you're killing yourself off slowly. So get in on that stuff because it's it's right, good, and proper. Well, thank you, Roger. <laughs> Roger's scientific data on it is something I know about. <laughs> That's great. Well, if you're interested in ordering some Qualcomm, which you should, right down below, there's a link. Just click on it. You can order it, and we get it shipped out to you. Uh, Roger, again, we want to thank you for being here, and we will probably do another show with you as well. And Janice, uh, thanks very much. Until next time, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll see you later. Roger, Bye. stick around. Bye.